I just had an acupuncture appointment. I'm gonna try acupuncture for a few weeks because it's coming upon the time where I could have a bit of a crisis. It's the seven month mark, I think. So this next month and a half, something could happen like that. And I've heard acupuncture can be helpful for trans consciousness. And I feel pretty relaxed after that appointment. It was 200 American dollars though. So hopefully I'm doing the right things for myself. And I created some bracelets like this that I want to give away as gestures of friendship. And I'm hoping that I can get in alignment with whatever it is I'm meant to get in alignment with in this next while. It's kind of do or die time. That's how I feel. And we'll see how that manifests. I started taking some doTERRA oils. I got their little uh, family essentials kit, which has lavender, lemon, peppermint, their blend called Breathe, Deep Blue, Melaleuca, which is tea tree oil, frankincense, oregano oil, Digest Zen, which is another one of their blends, and On Guard. They're all supposed to do different things, and it comes with a cool book to start to understand what some of them do, as well as information about ones that I didn't get, so I'll buy more. And it's a nice book. And so my digestion's been off, so I've been taking some of that internally and using the Digest Zen Lavender and Melaleuca internally, as well as a drop of frankincense. Frankincense is supposed to be good for so many things, especially anti-cancer. So I do a drop of that under my tongue. The other three I do in a bit of water. And then I wear the On Guard and the Deep Blue. And um, the On Guard beadlets, you can eat these. So these are also supposed to help protect from, you know, quote, negative energy from the inside, from the outside. So I think it's helpful to try these new gestures and I don't know too much about these oils, but I kind of trust it because I know enough about health in general to trust good things when I see them and also wanting to try because I've been on the Peter Smith program for a year, but I still need something more, I think, especially if I really want to meet life and the challenges that are going to be brought my way, especially if I start speaking up more, not only to myself. I can't shrivel and fall apart with every little comment or challenge. I need to be able to rise to that for sure. I also got in the mail a bunch of these hair ties, which I like to wear as wristbands and give away. These are really cool. There's so many different cool ones. And this is, this is fun. Maybe I'll get more of these. I like these ones. And I also am making some of my own, which I've made. Made a Create one. And the, the Cosmos. And then the Rainbow ones. They're kind of fun to make too. So I'm going to work on this gesture product or project. And um, also on something related to that. I have a good idea for that and that's something I think I'm going to work on as well. Yeah, things are going well, they're challenging. I'm going to go back home. Um, plans sort of happen that I'm going to go back home early. I'm going to go back after. I'm going to go back leaving on the 20th of January. So I'll be going back to Canada in the cold, but there are reasons for that that I'll talk about later. And I think it'll be good to reset and go from there and do some work and sort of focus back there. So I'm going to take my oils and get on with my day. And today I have a note in my phone about how today is seven and a half months since my last crisis. So it usually happens again between seven and a half and eight and a half months, eight and a half at the longest. So this next month, I need to take extra good care of myself. It's one month until I go to Celine Dion. So I could really be peeking at the crisis when I'm going to see Celine Dion, but hopefully 
it's really living a dream of mine in that time of crisis. If I can live a dream that I've been wanting for years and years right at the moment of crisis, I think I'm pretty free from the dysfunctionality of what can happen with this whole transconscious process. Last night, I kind of hit the wall, but it was pretty gentle and mild. And as I said, the last couple months have been really magical and everything and just lived the magic mostly and didn't really talk about it. And I've experienced a slowing down. Someone even noticed, they said, you're slowed down. And I experience it as when I'm trying to take my vitamins out of these cases that I organize. It's like very slow, like, like it's really hard to get them out. Whereas usually I'm sort of like, like Kung Fu moving through the world and able to carry five things at once. And also my backpack that I carry with me, I call it my magical backpack. Same stuff in it as always. And today's the first day. It feels heavy, heavy, heavy. Oh, so those other states of consciousness, those more energetic states, everything feels lighter. Everything is less dense. Everything's easier and more effortless. And now last night I experienced when I was falling asleep, same sort of thing. My heart was like, pull, pull, pull. <laughs> and it felt like my brain was just like dying and like imploding. But there wasn't really any fear. I could feel myself resisting it a little bit or wanting to get up and knowing that I couldn't. But it doesn't last very long. And then after that, I had to get up and use the washroom and then I just went to sleep. So, you know, no matter what I do, this can be sound, this can sound kind of sad, like, oh, no matter what I do, how many vitamins I take, if I do doTERRA oils and spend 200 bucks on acupuncture, the same thing kind of happens, this same cycle of every seven and a half to eight and a half months of this rapid deceleration. But I feel like the mood state is pretty much decoupled from it in that I know what's going to happen and I still know how to function. I know how to get up and shower and eat. And so when there's less energy to do whatever, get back to basics and at least do the basics. And one might think, well, if I'm in this lower energy state, I feel depressed, so I don't get up and I don't shower. But if one can still get up and shower and look nice on days when one feels slow, I don't even call it depression anymore because I don't feel depressed. Um, if one can do those basic things, one won't be as apt to be depressed. And then also say I'm ready to go and everything and I don't really have anything to do or I'm not working as much or something. For example, if I'm dressed and ready to go and a friend calls me, I can go and I feel good. But if somebody calls me, and I'm not ready, then I could be like, oh, I don't feel good. I'm not dressed. I'm not showered. So doing the basics anyway, even if I'm not doing this or that, can be helpful. And I'm not saying that's what my situation is now. But I am in California and I knew that I would be experiencing this well down here. But since I experimented with getting through it in June, um, on Vancouver Island, I knew that I could get through it and I didn't have to use that as an excuse to not come down here thinking, I might think, oh, I'll be in crisis. Whereas last year I came down here and I wore a bracelet, like a medical health bracelet every day saying, oh, bipolar one and all this. Now I don't really feel that need to be all that safe because of the strength I've built to deal with these changing states, you know, and it's not even a personal thing, you know, the whole of reality feels different. It's a, it's a whole other world of experience and it's not bad. I experience it as it's really hard to sustain and maintain those high energy states and go on being creative and in perception action and being able to do so much for so long. But I really did get a good harvest out of this one and being in this energy and being in relationship a little bit. I wrote down a lot of song lyrics. I wrote down a lot of quite a few insights, not as many insights. I wrote down quite a bit of structure for more of what I might want to create. So it was a really good harvest, but the wave is over. So I was thinking, oh darn, I didn't create with that wave of energy, but 
It could be that when one slows down, that's the time to sort of sit down and put some of those ideas into motion because in the higher energy state, the faster brain state, starting to create some of the ideas that one sees only creates more ideas. So it doesn't really seem like the ideal state for actually carrying out the ideas because there's just too many and then one gets lost in all those ideas. So I feel like that state is good for writing down ideas and then when it slows down, it's good for maybe taking action on some of them because the brain is so slow and the body's so slow that even if it does have ideas, it's hard to act on them, like new ones. And the brain isn't as energized to make new ideas or create new ideas or see new ideas, but it has enough energy to sort of move and do things and maybe focus more. So last year when I had this two cycles ago, I worked at a warehouse and just made some money while I was in like psychosis and feeling awful. But hey, why not use that time to work instead of being in a psych ward when one can get to that point and then when there's the good energy one can work on one's own creative projects and live a dream as opposed to well now I have energy so I'm going to go work and then when I don't have energy I'm going to sit at home and be depressed one can actually get to a point where one works it out the other way and I feel hopefully I'll be in a creative space where I'm creating my own projects all the time and always working and really, I am always working. I am working on quite a few things right now. I'm going to be putting up posters for a certain group. I was offered to do that. And I'm going to take the Subject of Reality Deep Dive course by Steve Pavlina. Uh, Peter Smith sent me a big, long document to read on a meditation for bipolar. Because I was supposed to do his half an hour a day for uh, six months. But I just can't. He says, if you forget once, you got to start again. And I forget everything. So it's really hard to do something where there's pressure to remember. And then I need to review the balancing brain chemistry documents that I have again because of how the crisis is kind of here. And, you know, the bracelets project. So there's lots on the go. It's hard to find time to do it right now because of other things that I'm doing. So yeah learning how to function learning how to kind of rapid cycle learning how to be capricious and and be okay with rapidly changing the way i manifest depending on who's there and what's happening and how things change radically within someone else and responding and it's quite interesting really so i just need to get through this month get to celine dion and as long as i can sleep now, I do have extra medications to take if I really have to, but last night I fell asleep just fine. And there's probably more to talk about, but I have to go do something. So I just wanted to check in and hope it's kind of crappy that I didn't capture much of a beautiful thing. Well, I did. I did. I didn't take videos of myself talking, but I captured a lot of beauty. So I will share that. I haven't edited videos and since I've got here. But I don't have time, so I'll have to do that later someday. So yeah, that's what's going on. One thing I noticed today was that my left eardrum was kind of spasming again. And I say again because a lot of times when I'm in this downward trend of energy, or I'm in that month of pre-crisis, or these... Um, experiences happening of this heart palpitation and these brain sort of implosions or brain palpitations I also have left ear palpitations I noticed that last October when I was having a crisis my left ear would often be spasming and when I use the Muse device it often shows a lot of activity in the temporal lobes and I feel that has something to do with how Space and time are relative, and with this transconscious phenomenon, we are kind of going between different levels of energy. Like, I was, last night when I experienced that death thing, I woke up and everything felt heavier, more dense, more material. And I think there are spaces where we exist more as uh, light and possibility and quantum and wave function type stuff. 
but um, there is often the slowing down because there is this gravity of the material reality. So yeah, I just wanted to tell myself that yeah, that is happening. Left ear, drum, palpitation stuff. I could do the whole Muse headband measuring thing again, but I'm not as interested in measuring it now more than I'm, now that I'm able to function more, it's not really a big deal. I'd rather function than sit there and measure the dysfunction. So yeah, it's a tool, but not allowing these tools of measuring and worrying and, and um, retrospecting take over the present moment now that can be lived. I'm saying this now, who knows how this month will go. It could be a bit challenging, but it's different this time because there's someone that I'm exploring with. And today I bought Steve Pavlina's 60 day subjective reality submersion course, because I feel like a lot of this stuff that happens in so-called bipolar is that this really big open subjective space opens up and we mistake it with objective reality or there's some discordance there where the vision and the subjectivity is so huge that we feel like it envelops others but people are living in their own personal subjectivity of course but we make this mistake that everyone can see the vision and the wonderfulness that we can see when it is wonderful for a time and maybe they can to some extent. Who knows? It's kind of like nobody wants to come out and play in this beautiful, subjective, wonderful world that we live in. Our subjectivity has been conditioned conditioned to this really narrow framework. And um, when people break out of that, it's kind of intimidating. Others can kind of smell it and they eventually sort of run after the person and trap them and put them in a psych ward and have all these professionals giving them attention for the rest of their lives when really that person had attention and was paying attention to this this deep subjectivity that has some form of reality but takes more people to dance in that shared space in order for it to manifest as more material or making what's so dense and material more light and fun and as of the quality of light which is a lot faster than matter. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. I'll probably start that tomorrow. And I think it's a good thing to dive into now because I'll be going back to Canada in less than two months. So to really get in alignment with subjectivity and that that I want to experience is important because there are elements back home that would want me to be a certain way that I just am not. And I'm finding that my experiencing experience here is allowing me to get really clear about certain things which can appear as like rigidness or harshness but for me internally subjectively it, it feels like clarity and I think it's a real gift that I'm receiving to get clear on certain things that have been an issue and there's going to be more issues for sure in the future so if I'm not clear on things that I can make clear now it's going to be hard to be clear when things get even more challenging. And I just had an insight. I was in a certain situation and then something came to my mind that I sort of reacted to. So instead of sitting there with the reaction, I literally just stood up from my chair and left. And so something came to mind as like an insight for epigesturetics for trans consciousness, which is you know, sometimes people can get in a space of being feeling really intense feelings and then maybe acting out of those strong feelings. And so the insight was make a scene or change the scene, meaning if we stay, we might make a scene like get emotional or upset. But if we just change the scene, if we just get up and move, which our human bodies are designed to do, that could actually be a better action than sitting in the discomfort and then spreading it. There's something to sitting in the discomfort, but that discomfort is still felt. Even if we think we're hiding it, it's not really being hidden. But if we move based on the discomfort, like move away, not in terms of escape, but seeing that it's not, it's not something that we want to be puppeted by, um, change scenes, just move into a different room, talk to someone else, do something different. Um, 
Like if we noticed that we were cutting ourselves with a knife or something, we might stop doing it and do something else. So um, I'm not saying that's ultimate, but it seemed to change the energy and then it actually kind of worked. And then the other thing was something that can happen a lot, which is seeing something that happened and then explaining it or retrospecting about it. And something that I explore here is something called insight and explaining or speaking from the past is an insight. So the insight that I had was wait, wait for the insight. So the one is move, like if there's some kind of stuff there or actually don't move, like don't move based on it, allow it to flower and wither and die. Um, and moving the body can be a, a part of an acknowledgement of just allowing it to die too. But then in terms of that other element, it's wait, wait for the insight. And that's not fully unfolded or really understood, but just wanted to spend one moment talking about an insight.